Alright guys, so on this third installment of Fantastic Homes of, Homes of Tamriel, I'm going to take you on a tour of Balagard's Ebonheart Chateau. He's got this property decorated in a vampire theme, which works uh, extremely well with this property because it's naturally dark and um, even during the day, the sky is filled with like smoke and ash, so it keeps it uh, dark and dim and kind of foggy here. Um, and the property itself is extremely dark and sharp and pointy it's it works extremely well uh, with with the vampire theme uh, so anyway uh, as we come in through the entryway here um, we've got a shadow uh, mundestone to our left thief mundestone to the right um, so it's a cool little bit of utility and you know the stone of the mundestones really works with this property as well and I come up the steps here um, we've got you know these braziers on either side on these nice bit of uh, stone here these are I believe these are um, statue bases uh, that were on the luxury furniture that these um, braziers are sitting on and we've got uh, these dark elf column lanterns here um, the column lanterns you'll see throughout this whole property they are a default furnishing that comes with this house even in the quote-unquote unfurnished version um, however uh, Balagard has I changed the placement on many of them, and I think he's done it quite well. Um, the placement here uh, really works, um, as well as around the fountain here. We've got these six placed, uh, you know, strategically in a place that seems extremely natural. And being that they are default to the property, um, obviously, you know, they, they work um, very well thematically. They look uh, like they absolutely belong where they are. And we got uh, the choice of statue here um, on the top of the fountain. Uh, works extremely well with the fountain. The colors of the stone flow together well, so it looks like a natural one-piece kind of thing, like it, um, like that statue really belongs on top of that fountain. So now we come over here, and we'll see um, we've got some of these Hope of Rivenspire um, street lights here. Um, not surprisingly, these are from the achievement vendor in Rivenspire. It's a nice uh, vine-covered street light. Now over here, um, you'll notice uh, this area, if you're really familiar with the property, you're going to know that these steps weren't here. Um, the rocks you see, um, these craggy rocks, they are they are default. Uh, but the staircase here, um, and these steps up here, this whole platform, everything we're standing on right now uh, is completely custom done, um, and very nicely so. Uh, Bellegarde's done it in such a way that it flows very naturally. Everything looks um, completely just natural and like it belongs. And we've got this uh, kind of shrine of sorts right here, or altar. Um, of course, you'll notice also we've got these three gargoyles chilling up on these columns, which, you know, also works quite well and is totally with the vampire theme. And we'll come around back here and see what we've got going on over here. Uh, so we've got a kind of shrine set up of sorts. Uh, this is a sigil of RK here. Uh, you'll notice there's all kinds of knives and daggers and whatnot sticking out of the shrine. Um, RK is kind of like the enemy to vampires. So that's why you see this, uh, this shrine all sorts of defiled and just completely abused. Um, you know, a vampire is not going to honor RK by any means. And we got a little cart here and some astronaut parts land in the corner there. Totally works. Then we see gargoyle, 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 gargoyle. Lots and lots of gargoyles. Um, now this is interesting. I think this might this might be an accident right here. I don't think this um this particular Dark Elf Column Lantern is meant to be sitting quite where it is. Um, so hopefully Dalagard will get that fixed. Because um, it's definitely not looking like it's meant to be there. Um, but these ones here, uh, down in front, look really good. And up there along the edge look really good as well. So over here to the uh, workshop area now. Um, you see here we've got you know we've got our crafting stations we got our clothing we got our blacksmith we got our woodworker our alchemy and we've got you know kind of appropriate uh, corresponding decorations we got a wall hide there 
kind of clothes basket and hamper here next to the clothing thing. Then we got this painting, uh, just chilling out in here, turned backwards, leaned, leaned against the wall. You know, it's just a nice touch. Then we got the blacksmithing and the the uh, typical Kashyyyk fire pit brick that people like to put near their blacksmithing station because, frankly, it just works. Um, cart, some basic storage stuff. Got the poison maker's cabinet chilling here. We've got some die pots on this table here. Uh, that might be the intention to add a die station right near here eventually. And of course, some wood piled next to the woodworking station. So we'll check out the uh, tower over here. And here in the tower, we've at the base of the tower anyway, we have uh, a sort of library or study set up. I've got um, some bookshelves with various levels of uh, books and other things on them. The skull on one, a little lock box, jewelry box up on another. Um, and we got an urn on that one. And a little uh, snake idol on the fourth. Uh, we got a podium with some scrolls. Uh, I really like this here. Uh, crate full of books. Um, I think this is the only place I've seen someone actually fill the crate with books, which I think was a neat and interesting and different kind of thing to do. We got the major skill thing. We've got a dreamer spider uh, chilling out on the wall there. It's a dreamer spider. It can totally do that. So it's all good. And nice tapestry there. Got a uh, painting there. I'm not mistaken. I think that might be one of the new paintings, which um, I think would have had to have been bought from the crown store as the ones you can find in the wild, so to speak, right now um, are in safe boxes and can't be laundered. And anything you can't launder, you can't use in your house. So um, it's unfortunate. Now up to the top of the tower. Um, not a ton going on in here, but enough um, to make it, uh, you know, believable. Uh, I got some seating, uh, a few tables with, um, you know, evidence of life, some food on them, uh, you know, wine glass here and there, bottles. And we've got a, a, a wine glass on the ground, as well as a bottle on the ground. Um, kind of really giving it a, a sort of lived-in kind of feel, like, Someone was up here drinking, having a good time, probably passed out, left their crap on the floor. Um, so, you know, it, it works. It's it's neat. It's cool. And um, nice thing up here in the tower. Um, this is not a decoration thing, but just a cool thing with the property. You get to see the, uh, the volcano and watch the lava just running down, which is uh, kind of a nice feature of this house. All right, so we're going to make our way into the main house now, which is going to be, by all accounts, the main attraction. The outside here is nice. Nothing too exciting, but um, it's got some cool things going on. Oh, really quickly, actually, I just noticed. Um, we've got the Craglorn skull uh, set into the wall back here. Uh, this is another situation where uh, the stone color just works really, really well. Uh, that Craglorn skull looks uh, totally natural and native to the property. All right, so inside, um, all right, so standing at the main entryway, uh, we've got a nice runner uh, leading us in, very red, um, which is, you know, cool. Uh, we look to the right, look to the left, and we see on either side we've got um, some craggling brazers and uh, a bench uh, sitting uh, for sitting. Um, nothing extravagant, um, but it works, and the kind of openness of everything um, really kind of fits the vampire theme too. Um, an overcrowded vampire house doesn't really uh, make a lot of sense. So we see these four uh, petrified statues um, at the corners of this uh, center area. And as a centerpiece here on this Daedric platform, we've got this um, orcish figure of strength, I believe it is. Um, it's just cool. It works well. It's nice and dark. And we've got these... Uh, bowls with candles um, set up at each of these four uh, circles on the floor. Um, 
So it's, you know, works really well using the uh, natural um, kind of decorative suggestion that the floor uh, leaves you. Um, of note, um, under this uh, platform is actually an area that's sunken in. By default, it has a fire pit there. So it's a, a cool choice, um, I think, to cover that up and do something different. Um, and this spot here really just lends itself to a kind of centerpiece altogether. And we've got the orcish chandelier hanging over the orcish figure of strength as well. Um, it does appear that the chandelier is a bit off center relative to the statue and the platform. Um, however, it, it appears. Well, it's centered up in regards to being uh, on a line between um, stones on the ceiling. But it is just a little off center from everything else. So now that I've noticed that, it's it's a little bit disturbing, but that's okay. Um, so you did, no doubt, uh, you've noticed uh, these four stained glass windows. Um, he's chosen to set them into the wall a bit uh, in such a way that the um, this part of the wall that sticks out a bit uh, acts as a sort of frame uh, for the stained glass, which I think is a really interesting choice. I've actually got this property and I put my stained glass in it, um, and I chose to have the stained glass sticking out um, further than that. Um, but seeing it done this way, um, I, I really I really like that decision. I think it works really well. Um, and the stained glass uh, kind of has a natural light to it, um, and it's, a, it's kind of a dimmer, and it's very red. Um, so again, it you know, really, really works with the vampire thing we've got going on here. Uh, so here, coming to the throne room portion, we've got a lot of interesting things here going on. We've got the stained glass again. Um, we've got these shelves set up with the Daedric, or Brotherhood candles on either end. And um, we've got this lead up uh, to the throne here. So, you know, this is, you know, this is a... Not default. It totally looks uh, legitimately default, but it really isn't. Um, so we got a platform here and some platforms here uh, leading us up to the throne. Craglorn braziers here. Um, these are set about halfway into the ground. There's a lot more to the Craglorn braziers. Um, I think this was an excellent choice. Um, it works uh, really well visually. The full height of the braziers, I think, would have detracted from what's going on here. And again, Craggle and Bridge is set in. And this whole um, stone platform that the throne is sitting upon is also custom work. Uh, so that's all been laid in uh, custom by Balagard. So behind the throne here, you notice these kind of uh, skulls and the chains and all that going on. All right, so. Some of you might know this, notice, notice and know this, and some of you might not. Um, those are actually Iron Maidens set way into the wall and exposing just the very outer part of the case. Um, and it just works absurdly well in this particular uh, scenario. Um, it doesn't look like it's an Iron Maiden. It just looks like it's a wall decoration of some sort. Um, and the skulls and the chains and the whole, just the imagery works extremely well with what's going on here in the house. Um, so it's, that's really awesome. Uh, and we've got the uh, skull hanging out here next to the throne. And of course, a couple gargoyles. Never enough gargoyles in this house. And on the wall here, uh, notice we've got the uh, Craglorn sconces, sword sconces. Um, so things like the uh, these Brotherhood candelabras, the sword sconces, the Craglorn braziers, the uh, stained glass, that's all luxury vendor stuff that has come and gone. Um, luxury vendor stuff, you only get three or four items a week, and they're generally pretty expensive, but they are usually very nice. So it's a lot of gold um, invested in this house, just looking at this view here. Those Iron Maidens, they're also, um, they're also luxury item. So over here uh, this hallway, we see this runner here leading us to the stairs. A couple nice red guard uh, benches here. And a few trophies nicely displayed on a orcish uh, counter here. So 
So we'll head upstairs first. And we've got another runner here on this landing. And an urn here, which works extremely well with the vampire theme. We got our Mages Guild and Fighters Guild banners as we come up. And then here we've got a but what I'd call a normal bedroom, not a normal vampire bedroom, but a normal bedroom. It might have non-vampire visitors or family members over. Um, we've got a cat here playing with a ball of yarn. Got not much to say about that. I mean, it's a cat playing with a ball of yarn. Um, chest hanging out here, a nice full shelf here, some dividers. And here we've kind of got our uh, merchant and banker area. Um, some runner, a nice bit of carpet here. Banker's uh, hanging out here uh, next to a table full of gold. Just gold everywhere and a painting and a uh, wall tile. And then over here, also kind of on the banker's side of the room, we've got this uh, big old bowl of loot. Uh, just gold and golden cup and, and um, a little safe box in there. It's just uh, very neat. I really like this bowl full of loot. Uh, works really well, very carefully done, um, just a really nice touch. And we got this painting leaned against the side there. And we've got this uh, headless statue with a brazier in front of it. Uh, brazier is casting some nice light on it, um, which works extremely well. And over here at the merchant side of things, we've got, um, we've got this um, opulent chest here, a bowl of Nurn Crux. Uh, we got the replica shattered Anse sword here, and we got some scrolls, uh, papers, and we've got a fan, some coins, and some feather and a stack of papers. Yeah, pretty standard stuff, but it looks good. The table that it's on is nice. Everything's spaced out well. Uh, definitely believable as a merchant thing. And we've got our smuggler over here, um, who's chilling out in front of a uh, chess and some pottery book and a painting that presumably was stolen and over here at the final part of the top uh, level of the house we've got a sitting area with some reading material available here on the shelf and some sitting out on the table as well nice uh, rug choice here nice little visuals brightens up the setting a little bit and we've got the table here with uh, another pen and inkwell and some papers and uh, candles. Uh, so it's a little kind of study slash sitting area and backpack chilling out there. So we come down the stairs and again we've got the Mages and Fighters Guild banner on this side as well, and the runner and the urn. So the two sides are well balanced. Um, and here we see, uh, similar to the opposite side, the red guard benches on the one side with the stained glass and then the uh, the trophy set up here on the opposite side. So we'll head now downstairs. This landing here, we've got uh, Brotherhood uh, tapestry hanging on the wall. Another runner, another urn. Um, very balanced, very even. Predictable, but not in a way that's uh, detracting from things. So down here, we've got a storage room for uh, what I would consider normal people food. Um, this is not vampire food. Traditionally, we got some apples, uh, some greens, and then we got some just generic storage containers, uh, cages, and uh, crates uh, laying here. And over here, we've got a little bit of a prep area. I got some cheese, got a knife, got a fish. We got some herbs hanging along the wall here. Our cooking fire is set up here as well, and some more storage, a wine rack. The Gold Coast steak keg, some more crates, and a keg. So here uh, we've got some more Dark Brotherhood type imagery going on. Uh, these Dark Brotherhood banners here in the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary sconce, and uh, one of the Dark Brotherhood books as well as the Blade of Woe sitting on a podium. And we've got these Lanterns of Anguish which kind of add to the sort of red um, Dark Brotherhood theme. Uh, here we've got these wall hooks. Uh, these are traditionally turned the opposite way, um, making an upward scoop uh, to hang something off of. Um, however, I think turning them upside down um, works really well 
um, with the sort of creepy vampire theme, because turned upside down, they seem more like claws um, rather than a place to hook a lantern. Um, so I think that was an interesting, um, simple and subtle and very effective uh, choice by Balagard there. Um, on either side of this hallway here, we've got the Craglorn tapestries. Um, very nice tapestries. Um, that's about all I have to say about that. We've got these orcish carpets here leading us in. And this is what we would call the vampire bedroom. So we've got our coffin uh, up on a platform here. Some more Dark Brotherhood imagery with the banners. Uh, Lantern of Anguish works both with Dark Brotherhood and vampire. We've got these uh, serpent tiles uh, laying against the column here. We've got statues flanking uh, the room on either sides. Again, with the balance. Um, balance is just pleasing. Um, Cryogler and sconces. We've got... Uh, Sigil floating here. Uh, another area with some books. We got some shelving with skull, scroll, another Dark Brotherhood book, a gem, bottle of some sort, and a little figurine. And over here we've got uh, again some more shelving with some more items on it. And we've got this uh, big bowl here with this giant soul gem set into it. And a uh, stack of books. And Dark Brotherhood banners here as we exit. And we'll come now and look at the last little bit of house. Uh, so we've got the Molly Ball banner here. We've got um, this pinion here. Uh, we've got a book chilling out, some skulls, astronaut parts, um, a gibbet uh, for torture and storage of perhaps a later meal uh, for vampires. So this is very much the um, vampire meal prep side of the room, really. Um, cages and uh, body parts and Molly Ball imagery, including the uh, Molly Ball statue. Um, yeah, more torture stuff, so very much the uh, vampire dining side. So we've got balance uh, down here as well, So, because on this side we have what I would call the vampire kitchen, and on the opposite side we have what I would call the normal people kitchen. So uh, the house brings together um, you know, normal living as well as vampire living. Um, so it's a it's an interesting blend. Uh, I think it's very well done. Everything is very balanced. Um, things are spaced well. Um, it is a, I mean, uh, predictable is not really the word I want to use. I mean, it's it's very believable as a vampire home. Uh, it has it has the things you'd expect to see. Um, a lot of the choices Bellagard's made uh, regarding decorations are very interesting, however, and kind of unique. Um, he's done a lot of fine work in uh, regards to custom stonework. Uh, he's done a lot of work uh, setting things into walls in ways that are interesting, uh, like the Iron Maidens, uh, the stained glass. Um, so you can kind of see that you know, sometimes just the little things and doing little interesting things can really make a house pop. Um, so that's it. Um, this is Balagard's home. Um, I love it. I hope you all loved it. Um, coming up at, at some point uh, relatively soon, I plan on doing um, an episode or two showcasing some Tal Galen tower, towers that were available for just four days this past weekend. Um, I know of a couple decorators who are working on them right now, and I know at least one of them has completely transformed the interior of the tower. And I can't wait until it's finished and I can show you that. Um, I hope you'll come back and check that out. Um, but anyway, um, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, have fun decorating.